Hey gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up. Today I want to talk about this gorgeous, fabulous, lovely smelling thing right here. This is Allianthus altissima, also called Tree of Heaven. So the common name for this tree is Tree of Heaven, but if you've ever dealt with it, you'll wonder if it didn't come straight out of the gates of hell. This species right here has several common names, including Tree of Heaven and Altissima. Varnish Tree, Copal Tree, Stinking Sumac, Chinese Sumac, Paradise Tree, or as it's known in China, Chou Chun. Although I don't know if I pronounced that right, so I apologize if I totally botched your language. Not my intent. There are several ways to identify this tree. The main one is by these honestly amazing huge leaves. So it has, this is a compound pinnate leaf. Each of these is a leaflet, not a leaf. The leaf itself is this long. It's huge. And this is not a large tree. This is a tiny specimen. Ilanthus altissima is a medium-sized tree that reaches heights between 60 and 90 feet tall with a diameter at breast height of about 3 feet. The bark is smooth and light gray, often becoming somewhat rougher with light tan fissures as the tree ages. It honestly has the appearance and texture of cantaloupe skin. The twigs are stout smooth to lightly pubescent and reddish or chestnut in color. They have lenticels and heart-shaped leaf scars when the leaf falls off. The buds are finely pubescent, dome-shaped, and partially hidden behind the petiole, though they are visible in the dormant season. The branches are light to dark gray in color, smooth, lustrous, and contain raised lenticels that become fissures with age. All parts of the plant have a distinguishing strong odor that is often likened to peanuts, rotten peanuts or cashews or rotten cashews take one for tree of heaven <coughs> <coughs> if i can breathe long enough to do this video oh my god <coughs> the leaves are large odd or even pinnately compound on the stem they range in size from one to three feet in length and can contain 10 to as many as 41 leaflets organized in opposite pairs with the largest leaves found on the vigorous young sprouts. When they emerge in the spring, the leaves are bronze, then quickly turn from medium to dark green as they grow. The leaflets are ovate, lanceolate, with entire margins, somewhat asymmetric, and occasionally not directly opposite to each other. Usually, however, they are opposite. Each leaflet is two to seven inches long. They have a long tapering end, but the bases have two to four teeth, while each of these teeth on the underside contain one or more gland at the tip. These are the scent glands. This is where that smell comes from. The leaflet's upper sides are dark green in color with light green veins. The lobed bases and glands are what really distinguish this from its lookalikes like sumacs and walnuts. The flowers are small and appear in large panicles of up to 20 inches in length at the end of the new shoots. The individual flowers are yellowish green to reddish in color. Tree of Heaven is also dioecious, with male and female flowers being born on different individuals. Which means it's gendered. There's a male tree and a female tree. You need both of them in order to reproduce, but each of those trees has the ability to sucker. Each clone is the same gender as its parent. Male trees produce three to four times as many flowers as the females, making the male flowers more conspicuous. Furthermore, the male plants emit a foul-smelling odor while flowering to attract pollinating insects. The fruits grow in clusters and are called samaras. The fruits ripen to a bright reddish-brown color in September. A fruit cluster may contain hundreds of individual seeds. The seeds born on the female trees are about 0.2 inches in diameter, and each is encapsulated in a samara that is 2.5 centimeters or 1 inch long and about 1 centimeter broad, appearing July through August but can persist on the tree until the next spring. The samara is large and twisted at the tips, making it spin as it falls, assisting wind dispersal and adding buoyancy for long-distance dispersal through hydrochory meaning it travels on the water. The females can produce a huge number of seeds, upwards of 300,000. This tree is also allelopathic, which means it creates like a toxin that acts like a herbicide out of its roots 
to reduce competition. Most plants cannot grow very close to a tree of heaven for this reason. Ilanthus produces an allelopathic chemical called ilanthone, which inhibits the growth of other plants. The M inhibitors are strongest in the bark and the roots, but are also present in the leaves, wood, and seeds of the plant. So basically, it doesn't matter if you're talking about the roots, the trunk, or the leaves, any part of this tree can actually reduce the growth of other plants around it. There are several look-alikes for this tree as well. You want to make sure that you're looking at a tree of heaven, not our native sumac or a walnut. They have very similar compound henate leaves. This tree grows extremely rapidly and it can get upwards of 50 feet tall in just 25 years. I did find one source that said it only lives about 50 years, but that's not really comforting as each year every female tree can create upwards of 300,000 seeds. That's a lot of babies. These seeds are samaras, which means they are the winged seeds that catch the wind and they can travel quite far distances. So this is how the tree spreads from one place to another. Another way that this thing reproduces is by underground rhizomes. It will send up suckers, and each tree can send up a sucker as much as 50 feet away from itself. So this thing can travel quite a bit. In the United States and in Europe, this tree is considered highly invasive and aggressive. It is native to China and Taiwan. It was brought over sometime in the 1700s, starting with Pennsylvania, and then sometime in the 1850s was brought over to the West Coast. It quickly escaped cultivation, and now, a couple hundred years later, it is a ginormous pest. It's gotten even worse these days because it is the main host tree for the dreaded spotted lanternfly, which is currently wreaking havoc over in the East Coast. All right, so this is a tree that needs to be controlled. If you see it in your property, you really should get rid of it. If it's small, dig it up. If it's not small, it's a little more difficult. If you have a bigger tree, an established tree that already has roots and it's impractical or impossible to dig it out, then the only way to control it is to cut it as low as you can to the ground and immediately apply a systemic herbicide. I hate chemicals as much as anybody else, folks, but there are some weeds where they are the only solution. So let's not go spraying every dandelion with Roundup, but in this case, it is absolutely the appropriate thing to do. You have to apply it right away. You have about a five-minute window before that trunk calluses over and seals and it will no longer take up the herbicide. So you want to cut and immediately apply your chemical either with wicking or with spraying or however you want to do it, but a concentrated glyphosate or some other systemic herbicide so that it can get into the, the tissue of the plant and start moving through the root system and actually do its job. All right, so as far as removal, I have a confession. I have never removed one of these before, which is one of the reasons I was so excited to have found one. This is the property belonging to a member of our local gardening group. They posted a picture asking for a confirmed identification. Several of us confirmed this is definitely Tree of Heaven. It is not Walnut. It is not Sumac. It is not any of the other lookalikes. This is Ilanthus, and we want to get it out, so I offered to come dig a couple. Now, I'm not going to be able to dig this one. This is going to have to come out with heavy machinery. But there's several smaller ones running around. And given the situation where these are and the fact that they'd never seen this tree before this year, we suspect it actually came in with one of their chip drops. This is a rural property. They're spreading chips over all of these invasive species that they have in this big field. And for the most part, it's working. It is suppressing a lot of invasive species out here. And the problem is, we think... We're suspecting, we're not sure yet, but that one of the chip drops may have contained some rhizomes from a tree of heaven. If somebody tried to dig up one of these things and put a rhizome through a chipper, it would absolutely have the potential to reroute in the right conditions. So I also want to talk about proper disposal of this thing. If you do dig these up, what do you do with it then? You don't want to throw it in your compost pile, for sure, you know that much. Depending on how your city treats their green waste, you may not want to put it in the green waste either. I suspect that burning would be your best bet. I don't know if that would create any kind of 
bad or noxious fumes, but I think burning would at least destroy the potential for new growth by killing the meristematic tissue. But I also did not find very many references on what to do with this thing after you dig it up. So, hey, leave a comment below. What do you do with this after you dig it up? What's the best way to dispose of this monster? Okay, so I have, I brought three different tools with me. I suspect that the garden fork is going to be the best for digging these things up. Next is my regular spade shovel. And if those don't work, just in case, I brought a trenching shovel with me. So I'm going to start by digging up one of the little ones and we're going to see what happens. So this is a really small one. This is either a seedling or it was grown from a root fragment. And I'm not sure which, but I'm hoping to find out. It could also be a shoot from a rhizome from a mother plant because the big one is just right back there. But I don't think so because there was never an established tree in this spot on this property. So I suspect that this is a, either a seedling or it came from a fragment of root. So we're going to find out. Now I'm going to dig. We're going to start with a fork because I honestly don't know what to expect here. All right, that's uh, more than I expected. This little seedling, this does look like a seedling. It doesn't look like it came from a piece of rhizome. Is not even two feet tall, and it has roots over three feet long. Hear this. This is insane. This is absolutely nuts. The roots are longer than the whole tree is tall. Crazy. Ooh, I can see why it's a problem. And these were kind of brittle. They broke fairly easily. I was able to chase most of them, but they just went right through all the wood chips. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? So the last thing I want to talk about in this video is kind of an exciting announcement, an unveiling, if you will, of an idea that I had recently where I am going to start ranking these gnarly weeds on a scale of difficulty of how hard they are to get rid of. I'm going to call it Amy's Pain in the Ass Weed Scale. So basically, I have a list of several variables that I'm going to consider on each weed that I want to put on this list. And for each thing that applies, they're going to get one point. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time this winter putting several of the weeds on this scale. It should just be a really fun game, I think. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And thanks for watching, everybody. On that note, I will see you in the garden. <laughs>